I mean, at the end of the school year can you predict? First of all, we're going to look at some descriptive statistics. So we're going to descriptives and we're going to ask for the reading tests before, the reading test at the end, and intelligence test. Hit OK. So we're just getting an overall impression of what's going on. We see before the intervention, these 167 students have a reading test score of 70.64 with a standard deviation of 18. Lowest score is 25, the highest score is 19. And uh, the, the highest possible score in this test is actually 120. And then after the school year, the end, we see the uh, average score goes up to 87.80 with a standard deviation of 16. And the minimum is at 34, the maximum at 119. And intelligence test, which is from 1 to 50 at the beginning, is 32 with a standard deviation of 6. Okay, that's our first impression. And now the second descriptive information that we would like is the correlation between these variables. So we're going to calculate the correlations. We choose um, reading test before, intelligent test before, and reading test after. The order that you pick these does not really matter. What we're looking at is how these intercorrelate. So the reading test before, the Pearson correlation, again here it's the same variable, reading test before, and then intelligence test, okay, 0.26, the correlation between reading test before and the, and the intelligence. You see that this is a significant correlation. And then the next reading test after, 0.83. So before intervention and after intervention, those two reading tests are highly correlated. And then we see also intelligence test before with 26 and after 0.23. So that makes sense, right? The, 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 at the beginning of the fourth year, the reading achievement then is correlated more with the intelligence test at that time, but it is also correlated with the reading test at the end of the school year, but to a little bit smaller degree. Okay, if we had a very high correlation between intelligence and reading tests before, right, those are the two variables that we're going to use to predict the reading test after. If we had a high correlation between these two, then we might have an issue of multicollinearity and we'd have to watch out. But here, it's a correlation, it's significant, but it's not that high, so we should be fine. Okay, now let's actually do our multiple... Uh, regression. We're going to analyze, regression, linear. So far exactly the same thing as with the simple regression. We choose the reading test after, that's as a dependent, that's what we're trying to predict. And then reading test before as our predictors. And now this will be a simple regression. We add one more variable, intelligence test, one more predictor. And we have a multiple regression. Right? At the same time, we're going to ask for statistics, that's OK. And we're going to ask to give us the predicted values and the residuals, just so to look at it, to it in more detail. Hit OK. We look at the output. Come down here. And The first box tells us about the multiple, uh, re how much we explain, how much of the variance we explain with the multiple regression. So we see the R square of 0.68. So we explain 68% of the variation in the reading test score at the end of the school year or after intervention. And our regression uh, is, you know, it is, explains a. Uh, significantly more than our error term so that you, you 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 should always have this significant right here right it's our regression is always explaining more information than the residual if this is not significant you just simply don't have a good prediction right and then when we come down here we look at our regression coefficients the constant here we uh, 
we don't pay too much attention to. We look at the reading test coefficient intervention. You have the unstandardized coefficient B is 0.73. The standardized coefficient beta is 0.82. And you can see this is highly significant. It's, the significance level is lower than 0.05. It's lower than 0.01, probably even lower than 0.001. It's a, a very meaningful result. And then the intelligence test, the unstandardized coefficient is 0 0.06 and the standardized coefficient is 0 0.02. And we see that this is a not significant result. So intelligence, once you know the reading test score of a child at the beginning of the school year, knowing their intelligence won't help you much more to explain their reading test performance at the end of the school year. So what this coefficient means exactly is for a person with an average reading test score, if they have one point more in intelligence, will increase their reading test score by 0 0.06 points in the reading test score. So almost no increase. Okay. On the other hand, if you, if you interpret it the other way around, you could say an, a, a kid with average intelligence if it has a one point higher on the reading test score, it will score 0 0.73 points higher in the reading test score at the end of the school year. So here, one point, without intelligence intelligence, one point higher is 0 0.73 points higher in the reading test score. So if you would want to try to make a very uh, uh, parsimonious model, that means a model that has few variables, which usually is, is better to use less variables, then you would probably exclude intelligence. But if you want to make a point that intelligence is not that meaningful once you know the reading test score, then you, inclu then you do include it just to show that this result as well. <laughs>